Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music, and today I want to talk about horn parts. Specifically, we'll look at studio horns built into Logic Pro. It's got a deep set of articulation sets for expression and color in the parts, and with careful planning, well-performed parts can really be convincing and can sit well in tracks. I've done a couple of tracks today. We'll look at it. We'll talk a little bit about how I decided to harmonize things, how the phrases work, how I used articulation sets to create dynamic horn parts. <music> Well, you know, I'm not a professional arranger. I do have to write for horns and strings a lot, though, and studio strings and studio horns built into um, Logic Pro are did both very powerful instruments. So the first track is just kind of a swinging mellow jazz track. Hopefully we'll get some horns on the screen in a second. You hear the chord progression, I should probably of a neo soul progression that's G major instead of G minor. Here are the horns. You could probably hear the articulation sets shakes, swells, vibrato. This one's a little more upbeat, more of a funk sound. Same horns. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the melody uh, that I wrote for that jazz part. And it, I wrote it on the trumpet. Well, here's the trumpet line just by itself. It's pretty convincing and sits in the mix really quite well. Uh, my channel strip for this just is adding a tiny bit of compression, a little bit of saturation and grit, as if we've, you know, recorded it to tape. But here's the most important thing beyond note choice. When you create a horn track in studio horns or a string track in studio strings, and you go all the way over here to the uh, inspector pane, you can tell it to use an articulation set. Right here, I've got a choice of articulation sets. And, you know, in logic with those particular instruments, those are the two articulation sets that I have. And I just select the correct instrument. In this case, it's Studio Trumpet 1. Doesn't select itself automatically. You've got to make that choice. But when you do, you then have in your sort of uh, edit pane over on the left-hand side of the track, once you get a region recorded, an articulation uh, pull-down menu. And this pull-down menu has a bunch of different articulations that you can choose. An articulation for a horn player is how they shape the, the lips when they play, whether they're uh, doing something that swells or perhaps it actually falls off, uh, the muted sound, a marcato sound or staccato sound, longs that swell and add vibrato. I've used most of these articulations in these sets. In fact, what I've done is I've, keep your eye over here, because right now it says expressive medium. I've chosen different articulations for each note. There's a marcato short and a passionate long. Can you hear how each articulation creates a sense of mm, maybe urgency in the phrase or at least expressiveness in the phrase? Now, because you have um, four horn players and you, maybe you're a keyboard player, you might be tempted to play a four-voice chord in your hand. Da, ba, 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 ba. I don't know. You might be able to do that. Don't. Write in each line by itself. Listen to the sax and the horns together. Now, 
I've done a couple of things here that are conscious. One of them is to sometimes double a melody and then sometimes create a harmony. Listen to how the doubling reinforces a line and the harmony sweetens it. Again, I'm using articulation sets for each of the alto notes. Doubled. Doubled and a harmony. Like any real player, some notes I've allowed to be a little bit longer. I've tried to get the 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 notes to line up um, when they begin, but it's not always perfect. Here, I, I mean, I didn't quantize this. I just kind of like played it in with a little bit of swing. Here are the all four parts. And again, I've done that sort of decision-making process where sometimes I've said, I really would like to double the line, and I also occasionally would like to have it be in harmony. The bottom parts, the tenor saxophone and then the trombone underneath it, uh, occasionally double the top line and then drop into thirds as well. When I'm writing for strings and horns, I'm not afraid of dissonant intervals. I will let the dissonant interval sit there to create sort of a little bit of a scrub, a little bit of a kind of intensity. Look at the, um, the strongly dissonant sound here between the D and the E flat up above F and D. So the D is doubled, you notice that? And you basically wind up with D, E flat, F kind of tightly together. Pretty strong flavor, and yet it really works within the context of the chords. Let's listen to it without, though, because horn players are used to playing these kinds of dissonant intervals. They do it all the time. They blend beautifully. They really work themselves together. <laughs> Unison, everybody gets a G, strong. That same half step. And I go to G major there, and so I wanted to emphasize the B and emphasize that sound of the, the major chord. Nice, right? Well, let's just hear everybody together. Let's, for giggles, look at this in um, notation. I don't ordinarily do it. Uh, I'm in the key of two flats, B flat major or G minor. In this case, G minor is what I'm thinking of, natural minor. And for you guys may know the answer to this. For some reason, the, the trumpet um, part has appeared in a grand staff. Like I've got a bass clef in the trumpet part, but <laughs> there's no bass in there, obviously. So uh, from the top to bottom, trumpet. Um, and then there's my alto, which sometimes is above the trumpet. And then tenor, and then down below, trombone. Let's go on to the, the funk part. The trumpet was my sort of keynote, so to speak. It was the melody, and everything else follows underneath it. You can hear it's got some squirt to it, right? When you're playing funk parts in these percussive sharp parts, it's fun to go into the articulation set. And I'm going to remind you the articulation set's always going to be over on the left hand side and say, this note here, it's going to be one of these kind of ones down at the bottom, maybe staccato or short falls or scoops or doits, whatever a doit is, a growl and a shake. Each of them has a different character. Cool. Uh, let's add our alto sax. A lot of fourths here, and this just comes out of the sort of funk and soul tradition. Fourths are going to sound good even when they're parallel. Fourths that collapse to thirds. Well, let's continue. The tenor underneath it, creating triads mostly, sometimes seconds.
occasionally some contrary motion. You see right here where the melody goes up, the tenor sax goes down. Last but not least, certainly the mighty trombone adds a nice quality to it. And we really do get some stacked fourth chords here um, and some pretty solid sounds. Again. Parallelisms doubling the melody with the trombone and trumpet. Let's look at it one last time and just listen with the band. I have to say, I can't show this in score view. And again, I don't use score view ever in Logic. And maybe you guys can explain to me why this is true. But when I put it in a score view, every measure is like this long. And it just goes by so fast. I want to just compact it so I can see like I'm... I can't figure out how to do it because I'm an idiot. But let's just look at it on the piano roll. I love that pocket. Well, it's a sampled instrument. Is it 100%? 100%? No, of course not. Um, and, and yet we've got a sense of vitality, animation, and intention in the part. It's got some energy. And it's got energy because we took care as we built the part. We used articulation sets to create phrasing. We recorded each voice separately. We thought carefully about the voicings and kind of just created a part that has like real purpose in the track. Add one horn player to that mix, and it'll sound amazing. It'll be super supportive for, say, a vocalist or guitar. I don't play horns really anymore. I, I played clarinet and saxophone and flute when I was young, but all I have left in my house is a flute, and nobody really wants to hear flute anymore unless I'm Lizzo and I'm not. So, Well, I hope this has been useful. Like and subscribe, ding the bell, and uh, you know, I'll see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.